The Scottish Tourism Alliance is the largest member organization for tourism businesses in Scotland and the leading representative body for the industry. In my opinion, it's one of the most effective tourism advocacy bodies in the world, a linchpin organization that connects tourism businesses, destinations, sectoral groups, and other organizations to improve collaboration, knowledge sharing, and best practices. The Scottish Tourism, tourism Alliance Pen Tourism Scotland 2020 strategy was launched in 2012 with the ambition of making Scotland a destination of first choice for high quality, value for money, and memorable customer experiences. The strategy was adopted by the Government of Scotland, marking the beginning of an eight-year journey of alignment and development that was nothing short of remarkable. In March of this year, the STA embarked on its next strategy, Scotland Outlook 2030, with the ambition of being a world leader in 21st century tourism. Mark Crothall is the CEO of the Scottish Tourism Alliance. He's an industry veteran who worked his way up from his early days as a hotelier in Cape Town to lead, as I said, in my opinion, one of the most effective tourism advocacy bodies in the world. Good morning, Mark. How are you? Where are you today? Hi, good morning. Um, I'm absolutely good. It's uh, Thanks for asking. It's uh, already halfway through the day for me. I'm in Glasgow. Um, the sun's not quite shining, but uh, we're looking forward to uh, hopefully some positive announcements from our finance secretary this afternoon on some additional support packages for, uh, for our industry. So it's a busy day ahead, but uh, delighted to be speaking to you today. Well, it's a pleasure to have you. Mark, back in March, you were at the Scottish Exhibition Centre in Glasgow launching the next phase of the strategic plan for the Scottish tourism industry, Scotland Outlook 2030. Within days, the entire worldwide industry of tourism would change. Talk to me about that day and then talk to me about the 2030 strategy. Yeah, it seems a sort of lifetime ago. Um, every year we host an annual tourism conference. We deliver there two actually. Um, so March for us in Scotland is Scottish Tourism Month. Uh, and uh, the 4th and 5th of March was our signature conference. And one of the, um, the key uh, agenda items was to officially, uh, alongside uh, the First Minister of Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon, uh, launch um, our future tourism strategy Scotland out with 2030, as you said. Um, on that very same day, Scotland uh, was experiencing its first uh, hospitalised case of uh, COVID patient uh, in Dundee. Um, Boris Johnson had just uh, reminded everybody to keep washing their hands and singing happy birthday twice uh, to make sure they were cleaned properly. Uh, and we never really, uh, from the stage, uh, appreciated you know, the impacts of what we have experienced over these last few months. Uh, we had an audience of around uh, a thousand people from across the sector as well. Um, and it soon became apparent uh, from stepping off the stage, uh, we had to shift into um, a crisis management situation and protect as much as we could of our industry uh, and get it in a fit place to reopen, uh, hopefully um, more permanently in the not too distant future. So we're, we're going to dive into what that pivot looked like for the next eight months, but let's talk for a minute about alignment. Um, the work you've done on alignment since since 2012 and before is remarkable. I, I, I say unabashedly, I think you're one of the most effective tourism industry associations in the world. Talk to me about the role of the STA when it comes to um uh, researching and penning policy that the government will eventually adopt. Well, let, let, let me just take you back a bit to uh, what that conference that we had in twenty uh, in March this year, what that looked like back in twenty twelve. Um, there was a forerunner to our organisation, which uh, wasn't as effective or certainly wasn't as representative. Uh, and I went before I accepted the job to go and have a look to see what this was all about. And I attended the conference that I had one hundred and twenty people at it and 80% of the audience were from the public sector. There was no industry at the table. Um, we evolved as a, as, as a result of an invitation from the government to uh, 40 business leaders to, to basically give a, a critical overview and opinion of what was the then tourism strategy pre-2012. Uh, and the majority of the industry guys said, look, 
we didn't even know there was one because you've never included us in the conversation. So um, the upshot of that was, uh, well, give us your view. Is is it going to achieve its ambition? We've gone through foot and mouths and some tough challenges, not too dissimilar to the ones that we've gone at the moment, but it wasn't going to hit, hit, hit its mark. So uh, the invitation came about then to the industry leaders, 40 of them, to say, right, well, will you shape a future strategy? So um, if it was going to be industry led and there needed to be a guardian of that strategy, that's how the, the Scottish Tourism Alliance came to bear. Um, the upshot of that for me was to gather the industry collectively around us. So we were able to uh, ensure that we had a powerful voice and articulate uh, in a very uh, well-structured fashion um, the realities of the, what's on the ground, what the industry wanted, how do we get them to buy into a strategy which they are be part of and have a sense of ownership. Uh, and then when you set out an ambition for a you know, a billion pound growth within the, the, the time frame of the strategy to uh, drive, um, you know, that growth through turning your assets and sweating your assets into li delivering really great experiences. But the foundation stone is around leadership and collaboration. That was the first priority to do that. And very quickly that happened. So immediately we had a voice that became powerful uh, over a, a relatively short period of time. And the government saw that as a a fantastic uh, benefit to them because they could speak to a core a core institution uh, that gathered together, you know, a group of people who could, you know, articulate what was what was the right here right now, and we shape our policy agenda through our ambition of delivery. Um, so, what does it need? What do we need to do to achieve our aspiration for growth? What has to change? So, whether that's taxation, whether that's uh, more investment into person into skills development or into infrastructure those then became our drivers around our policy agenda uh, and that gave us the voice at the table so is, is it fair to say that that you know one of the key focus of that entire strategy was alignment you saw the pieces you saw the necessity to align them and then you started literally working from the granular level right up to the bigger enterprises right through government to create the alignment that would be necessary to take advantage of all those assets? Yeah, 100%. I mean, you know, we had 365 tourism associations, I think, that existed or trade bodies that existed in Scotland at the time. So how do you consolidate? How do you bring everybody together to align behind a common framework? And, um, the, the, and, and, and you know, although it, this was industry-led, but very much together with uh, the government and the agencies as well, they were at the table, Visit Scotland, Scottish government, Scottish Enterprise, Highlands and Islands Enterprise, right behind this whole agenda. But it was driven by the industry, led by the industry, chaired by the industry. Uh, and the upshot is that the framework of the strategy, uh, as we called it the rocket, we referred to it as our working document, uh, has been adopted across different destinations across the, the country, um, but also through different sectors as well, uh, whether it's marine tourism, uh, golf tourism, to uh, even our own national tourism awards has a framework around uh, the 2020 uh, rocket, um, as has um, applications into growth fund to be able to get that support to do marketing initiatives. You had to demonstrate that you were aligned to the vision and the ambition set out in 2020. So total alignment. And as you said in your introduction, you know, my background had always been in operations. Uh, I'd never worked with the public sector or government guys before. Um, and when I came in, I thought, my God, there's an awful lot of money being wasted here um, because people were doing lots of different things and there was no joined up approach. So, you know, alignment was critical to be able to drive real, real value. It let Visit Scotland uh, be the national marketing agency and do what they do really well. You know, and you their, their marketing uh, agenda became um, the marketing initiative that sat within the strategy itself. So uh, a joint effort, but led by industry uh, in a very strategic way. About midway into that strategy, you you had as a pro, as is appropriate a review, and you found that you were quite a bit ahead on alignment, and then you shifted that alignment to include storytelling and and um, the asset base of the of the stakeholders. So you went from just aligning the industry, realizing you were achieving that, and started to look at aligning individual assets and properties, and that's that sort of took up the second half of that entire strategic plan period. Yeah, I mean, you know, we were coming from, you know, a very low base. So we had to build uh, to get ourselves to a point of departure where we could really start to make a, a difference. And 
you know, like every country in the world, you know, yours, uh, we've got lots of beautiful landscapes and everything else, but where is our point of difference? You know, digital skilling is another one. You know, we've suddenly realized that our digital skill set uh, was very, very um, limited. Um, so there was a, a need to educate. And how do we tell our stories differently? Um, you know, what's our point of difference? You know, we, we, we're known for our castles, our shortbread, our whiskey and our tartan, you know, but actually that's become a given, you know, people want to know what's the real truths behind it all and how do you tell stories. So this is a great example, but um, that pivot mid, mid, mid review um, was really what then set us into the next phase of, of, uh, of going on to achieve the targets that we'd set out to. So isn't it interesting, I, and, and I've, I've said this a number of times, rolling into January of 2020, the idea of civic alignment uh, with multiple levels of, of, of civic entities from governments to peoples, the idea of stakeholder engagement and the idea of, of the digital excellence uh, component, they were still being debated as to whether or not they were the critical components of tourism. And it's interesting, in COVID, that argument went away. There's not a destination organization or a trade body out there who doesn't understand that stakeholder engagement, civic alignment, and digital excellence are the next wave or, the, or literally the future of tourism. Um, when you look back, can you, can you take time to pat yourselves on the back for being almost a decade ahead on that idea? Well, I'd like to uh, think yeah, we, we weren't so far ahead. It's worrying that you say that we were. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it, it's, it's collective effort. There's a, Scotland's got a great, great history around innovation, around technology as well. You know, where, where gaming, Dundee is that, that, that place where it's sort of Grand Theft Autos and all these guys. Skyscanner, you know, born in, born in Scotland as well. So um, we've got pedigree there. Um, but... You know, the sense well, why of, is why is it worrying, Mark? Why do you say it's worrying if you were that far? Well, I'd like, to, I'd like to think the rest of the world are actually on the same page and and keeping at pace because you know we're we're a global industry. Um, our customer base is the same. We're all after the same markets. Yes, you know, it it, it talks about we talk about collaboration. Uh, you know, working with your partners, um, being competitive, yes, but actually doing things together is making ourselves a lot more fun. But equally important is actually amplifying the importance of tourism. Uh, to the to the economies of the world and how you know we've seen this through COVID, when you when when the tourism industry has crashed in the way it's done, the impact is felt right across the economy, uh, and you know that for those that may be anti-tourism for various reasons are now I think waking up to the fact that we, we need tourism, we need a healthy tourism sector, and you know going back to the the sort of evolution period over the the strategy, uh, we started out with our tourism minister being a junior minister in government. Um, the, junior, the ministerial role is now a cabinet secretary's role. Um, and, you know, it's right at the top table taking a direct report. Um, ministers elsewhere in the UK and UK government uh, are still junior ministers. So the importance of tourism to Scotland's economy was recognised uh, very soon into the strategy, recognising that you've got a strong leadership body, recognising that there's a real will and desire by the industry to learn, develop and, 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 and take on what is uh, you know a massive uh, opportunity and working also as well very closely with our colleagues in the food and drink sector uh, where you've got the powerhouses of Diageo's and exporting you know, it's tourism's an export product as well that we need to remind everybody of that and technology was obviously going to make us be visible in the world um, because many people in the states think we're a little village in somewhere in, in, in the UK but we're actually a nation in our own right. Well as they say your strength is your weakness right? <laughs> Your weakness is your strength. So um, I think you're going to have to accept that torchbearer position. I think the rest of the world has caught up. And, and I, I think, sadly, the the crisis of COVID has rang home those points. And But as I say, you were doing them, you know, almost a little more than a de decade ago. Um, I remember seeing you in Canada at the TIAT conference, Tourism Industry Association of Canada. I think it was about three years ago, four years ago. Oh, I think it may have been back even longer than that. I think it was possibly around 2013, uh, you know, year one in of, of the strategy itself. Yeah, 20, 20, 2013, it was uh, Michelle McKenzie's farewell. Uh, oh, that's that, right. It, it was 2013. It was 2013. Yeah, 2013. yeah, yeah. It was bloody cold. No. <laughs> well, we, we have a similar system here. We enjoy the great luxury of having um, – tourism be a ministerial position in government, not just at the national level, but at the provincial level. That 
uh, came up in a discussion I had yesterday f- with a friend from DC, and he asked, you know, has that has that helped your recovery resources and efforts? And, and my answer was unequivocally yes. And I and I went on to to talk about my friend Mark Crothall and his take on that. So that ability to have such a tight relationship with government to be recognized as an industry voice that really is in a in a very um, forthright and impartial way reflecting what's going on that's helped you in the covid crisis hasn't it oh, without without question um, we uh, at the outset um, formed uh, what was what we refer to as STURG, the Scottish Tourism Emergency Response Group which was a uh, an established response group mechanism put in play during uh, foot and mouth. So it was its purpose was tried and tested, uh, but there was no industry body there before. So us now being at the table, uh, we were able to bring the industry you know, together on a weekly basis, convene around the table with the cabinet secretaries and really gather in those firsthand impacts and, ne- and needs from different components of the sector, uh, whether it be in country sports tourism to marine tourism to to say outdoor adventure, hotels, accommodation, all the different segmentations uh, on a week to week basis and actually then have that place and time being given to us by uh, First Minister of Scotland, you know, uh, private calls um, for lengthy periods to hear firsthand how the sector was faring and what it needed. But the other dimension that we have in Scotland is that um, we're very dependent as well on on what comes out of Westminster. Um, because we're a devolved state, so um, yes, tourism is devolved, but the reliance on Treasury in London, things like the furlough scheme, uh, access to um, you know the grants, uh, we needed to be able to have our voice heard in uh, the Westminster government Treasury as well. So uh, we also have a, a place at the UK Tourism Industry Council table, which is which is very welcomed. Um, but our our industry, whether you're in Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, we're all suffering the same issues. So speaking with an even stronger voice, um, but also knowing that you've got the backing of your cabinet secretaries and your first minister um, into into Westminster's government as well is is something that uh, many of my colleagues are very envious of elsewhere in the UK. Well, and and it's not all just talk either. I mean, there's some really tangible shifts you made. If I'm not mistaken, you reallocated marketing budgets to sector-based trade bodies. You looked at community work. There's been a real shift of what you do with your resources over the last eight months. Yeah, Visit Scotland, um, you know, National Marketing Agency realized that, you know, the importance of associations and trade bodies um, and, you know, there was no point in really looking to market to the international community. So, again, having those very open, transparent, healthy relationships that we've nurtured over the, the years, um, we're all in this together. We're friends, we're allies, we all have the same vision, same ambition, uh, you know, we, our, our, our Outlook 2030 vision to be the world leader in 21st century tourism is signed up to by everybody here. So. How do we get back on track quickly and what needs to be done? So um, making those uh, adjustments um, was very uh, was very swift uh, and it gave uh, a huge amount of comfort and confidence as well to the industry, the small guys out there to know that someone's got their back, you know, and we're looking after each other as best as we possibly can. And that's been, you know, our, our, our aim. Uh, and it's been some harrowing times, harrowing calls, you know, from friends and colleagues who built up you know, massive amount of reserves over 25 years to see it all taken away in minutes uh, from having brides who booked into hotels that couldn't get married. Um, so it's been tough, but we've done this together uh, and, you know, we'll recover together. It's about, you know, that's, we can be, we, we are the solution to recovery. Um, whereas much as we're not, we're not a problem. We should be seen right. as a solution. Well, and let's talk a little bit about <clears throat> recovery. Um, we're now speculating that it's fall of 2021 before we see any kind of return to normalcy. And even that's not, you know, full power. That's that's being able to travel in a relatively unrestricted way. So we've got we've got another eight months like the last eight months to go through. And that's going to be tough for this industry because we've used a lot of resource in the first eight months. And I know we're all stretched thin. What do you see in terms of timelines on recovery? What are you thinking? Yeah, well, we're in the third winter, um, as we describe it. Um, you know, yesterday, milestone moment for us. Uh, first vaccinations um, started. Um, the rollout is very, um, 
you know, likelihood we'll have our working population vaccinated by the end of the summer. Um, you know, it's dependent on obviously the vaccine coming through, but great news that we've got that happening. So there's light at the end of the tunnel. Um, realistically, I said to get some international movement again, I, I, I'm not seeing that probably until 2022. Um, I think uh, we'll, we'll reopen in, in, the, in the April springtime with probably a similar trade to the one that we had in July 15 when we reopened this year. A long, strong appetite for domestic market tourism. Um, but to get going again and to get back to 2019 numbers, we're really talking about 2023. Well, I, I want to round out talking about 2030 strategy, but you did just remind me of something. The domestic tourism component has become incredibly important. And a lot of places I talk to realize that they may have been ignoring it to some extent over the past um, decade as, as international markets were just rich and flowing. Um, we've all fallen back on the fact that our domestic markets are what's keeping a lot of our businesses alive. And I think you gave me a great example when we talked last time. You said, you know, working in Cape Town, it was always surprising how few locals had been up to tabletop mountains. Yeah, I mean, I was I was told that um, in my time there that only 70% of people who live in Cape Town, or I'd say 70% of people who live in Cape Town had never been up Table Mountain. And then I reflected myself and I thought, you know what, um, I've gone out from London, had, had I ever been to Buckingham Palace or had I been to Windsor Castle or had I been to Ascot? And I thought, shit, no, I haven't, you know. So right. uh, I make a point now of doing that. And we've got a situation in Scotland, um, you know, how many Glaswegians have been to, to Edinburgh Castle? I mean, Glasgow and Edinburgh didn't talk to each other for many, many years. I mean, the strategy has helped all that process. But we have 700 islands, um, you know, on our coastal coastlines, amazing waters, waterways. Uh, so how do we get more people to go and explore what's on their doorstep and actually start to, to learn and see and become ambassadors for our own tourism proposition? And, you know, supporting local uh, both from a point of view of your helping your supply chain and your your friends and your neighbors stay in business has been again a, a massive campaign message for us. So um, getting out there and uh, seeing what's on your doorstep, many more people now have thankfully, um, and the Glasgow and Edinburgh and are all best of pals and we're all talking to each other and getting on with life together. But um, it was scary stuff. But seventy percent of our market has always been domestic tourism. 50% of that market has come from within Scotland. So it's not been a complete, you know, switch off. Um, however, we now need to sort of pivot and almost have, you know, 100% of our, our market is, is, is reliant on the domestic movement. Indeed. Um, I want to talk about the 2030 um, strategy in closing. And, and there's four points you made to me. People, business, place, and experience as a focus. People, business, place and experience and all of it through a lens of sustainability. I'm going to have to say, Mark, once again, you're leading the pack. This is all tremendously timely. Uh, it's just as relevant in COVID as it is coming out of it. Um, talk to us about your 2030 strategy. Well, we we knew when we looked at 20, the 2012 strategy and we, we, we evaluated at the end, it was very much focused on volume, you know, so, you know, let's try and get an extra billion and, um, you know, as as we've all witnessed around the world, we've seen mass tourism start to evolve. And and likewise, you know, we've seen those impacts um, of anti-tourism agendas. Um, but, you know, infrastructure was was vital. Uh, so uh, and then we talk about the importance of communities as well. You know, we need to bring people with us. Um, Tourism is everyone's business, as we, we say. We need to make it and allow it to be everybody's business. So, uh, and then, um, you know, by chance, I mean, it wasn't obviously COVID's come and it's proved the point that, you know, unless you put business as one of your priority areas and making sure that business is sustainable um, and can evolve and, and, and innovate as well, then, uh, you know, there's a real risk we could have ended up falling backwards. 23 days of liquidity, I think we had in our businesses when COVID hit, and that's scary. Um, how do we change our priorities around making the industry seem to be a career of choice and it's not one that you fall into because you fail at college or whatever, you know, actually it's got real career potential. Uh, you can accelerate very quickly. There's massive opportunities. Um, and then place, you know, uh, places as destination that's people are our places the right places for people to go to. So how do we distribute the tourism wealth uh, into uh, far apart? Um, and experiences is really the carryover from what we had in the um, in the 2020 strategy, but 
the, the, the world is, you know, Greta had done her bit um, and obviously Blue Planet, uh, all of these things, you know, responsible travel, um, very much out there. We looked at consumer behaviours and what those future uh, aspirations were. So absolutely, Scotland has its ambition to, to hit its climate change targets. Uh, and we want to be part of that contribution and behave responsibly, both in a sustainable way, but through socioeconomic and environmental. Um, so that's our, that was our all through that lens of sustainable. Every decision we make, uh, everything we do, we consider that sustainable agenda uh, and then look at what the conditions for success, what needs to be in place to, to, to make that happen. Right policy, right investment, right people, right infrastructure, technology, you know. Um, so uh, powerful. Uh, and as we recover now, um, you know, it's still very relevant. The strategy, we did a COVID overlay uh, to see it's, it's, if it's right, you still put the purpose and it is. Uh, and I guess our vision to be the world leader in 21st century tourism is now to be the world leader in 21st century recovery tourism or tourism recovery. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're on, we're on that track, but it's about this mission of, you know, doing this together to enhance the benefits of tourism positively across Scotland, still delivering the very best for our visitors, our businesses, our people, our communities, and importantly, our environment. Well, the Scottish Tourism Alliance is uh, doing remarkable work and it's a lesson to all of us. And Mark, I, I got to thank you for taking the time this morning to, to have us let, let us have a little look behind the curtain. Um, I'm encouraged by what you're doing. I know uh, many, many other people are and, and will continue to be. Thanks for being here. Have a great day. And I hope the announcements coming down the pipe today are, are favorable. Thanks very much. And it would be absolutely foolish of me not to say everybody Make your way to Scotland when the travel movement gets going again. You're very welcome. We look forward to welcoming you here in the, in the months to come. Stay safe. <laughs>